Where are you, Susan? Where are you not right now? I'm in Virginia, near Washington, unfortunately. But <laughs> <laughs> uh, why, unfortunately? Well, you know. Anyway, we're starting now. And uh, hello, everyone. Um, I have the pleasure, and so do you, of uh, talking to Guy Nativ, who is uh, Oscar nominated for his sh short live action film, Skin. And I assume, um, have you not been to the Oscars before? Me, no. No, okay. <laughs> have you p picked out your tux yet? <laughs> <laughs> I mean, I'm. Uh, we we're so overwhelmed by by this whole thing. Uh, I mean, I'm recording. Oh, there's there's my baby. <laughs> that's, that's, what a sweetie! Hi, my wife, producing producing partner wife. Yeah, my baby. Hi. <laughs> What's her name? Alma. She. Alma. Born yeah. four months ago, so yeah. almost five, five months ago. Yes, She's our good, our good luck charm. <laughs> <laughs> well, thank you for making a cameo appearance. <laughs> All right, I'll let you guys okay. see. Bye. Bye. <laughs> <laughs> okay. Bye. <clears throat> so yeah, she was born um, four months ago. Um, yeah. All, all came together with Berlin. Um, uh, with a feature, and then uh, Toronto, and it was Toronto, and then Berlin, but the baby. Yeah, yeah. Together. So yeah, it's my first. Too much one. going on, but it's all good stuff, right? Well, yeah. <laughs> yeah. But congratulations on your nomination and your baby and everything else. But uh, now it's interesting because I don't know if you know your competitors at all. They're all from different countries, it seems, Canada or Spain and. Yeah, um, in England or Ireland, I guess. But four of the, the five films are about boys in peril. And I don't know what that means. I don't know if, when you realize that, I mean, they're very different films, but, you know, they that was the topics that were kind of being handled in different ways. And I just wonder what you think about that, you know, that artists like yourselves were drawn to that kind of topic right now in this time? Well, you know, I, I think that kids are always um, kind of a cinematic vehicle in a way mm -hmm. to, to bring ideas. You know, my first short movie called Mabul, The Flood, was also about two kids and um, uh, one is autistic and, and suffer from autism, and and the other boy is kind of like becoming his his brother, like a, his elder brother. And it's yet you know, I I feel that kids, first of all, that the you know it's it's almost like we are bringing a lot from our childhood, you know, and it's it's uh, kind of like you go back to your childhood and you you through your childhood you bring your stories, and I feel that they naivete. Of a, of a kid that shatters um, yeah. in a very drastic, um, you know, um, incident is very is something that cinema always captured in such a such a powerful way. Yeah. And, you know, and, yeah. and regarding the shorts that are nominated, every short has a different approach. Um, mm -hmm. It's you know. Um, there was also a wonderful short uh, named Caroline that almost got in oh. uh, to the five. That was one of my favorite shorts this year. Uh, that showed kid kids in in a, in a in a in a completely different way than what I show kids. And yeah, you know, I go back to Andrea Arnold who did a uh, Wasp and won mm -hmm. the Oscar for. It. She also also had kids in the. But I I think that you know it's. In, in skin, it's not about a kid's point of view. They're not the protagonists. Of the no, right. Components. They are components in the story, and they kind of like it's almost like observation uh, on the situation. So I think you know it's it's a uh, cinema. If you go back in time, like cinema used kids in a you know in a right. great way. Um, and then my first film uh, that my father took me. That I was overwhelmed, and I said to myself, "I want to be a filmmaker." Was 
was E.T. and, and Henry Thomas and the, this wonderful mm -hmm. performance that you never know, forget. Yeah. Yeah. yeah, you go back to history of cinema. Yeah, and um, but it's um, the t I from what I read, you had a, read an article that gave you this idea to do a you know the movies about a, a family of skinheads and it, the guy's one saving grace, I think, is he does love his child, but what he's teaching him about the world and how to think and how to act is very damaging. And, you know, the child obviously loves his parents, but, you know, you're sitting there on the edge of your seat going, <laughs> this is not going too well. And uh, I think, um, you know, now you being a father of a baby girl and seeing what's going on in the world, you know, I think a lot of people are thinking, what are we leaving for our generation now? Because I'm older than you probably, and I remember having things a little different <laughs> than the way things are going these days, unfortunately. So, you know, the whole idea of people being, you know, somehow feeling free to do these kind of things against people who they think somehow are, you know, taking something away from them or somehow, you know, they, they want to be emboldened to run the show rather than, you know, allow people to live their own lives. It's, it's interesting. And, you know, I don't know how much research you did on all this, but, you know, it's, it's very, um, you sit there thinking, you know, it, it's it's very nerve wracking because you're watching this kid who's sweet and nice, but he's learning all this stuff and witnessing all this stuff. And uh, I don't know, you know, I don't, I, I think you came up with your idea long before, you know, the new president of the United States came in and then these issues became relevant as well as racism and anti-Semitism and everything else was dredged up by people that, you know, weren't emboldened the way they are now. So, you know, I, I think you, you were probably ahead of the game a little bit when you came up with the idea for your short. So you want to, you want to know how it all started, right? Well, you said, I know there was an article you read in the newspaper. Was that it? So, it, I mean, my wife now uh, and I were uh, in long distance relationship. I was in Tel Aviv. She was in uh, LA. She's American Jew. So we, uh, you know, I know, and then we kind of got, got engaged and got married. So I knew that I'm going to move to the States. It was pre, pre Trump. It was like seven years ago. And I was looking for my first U S feature. Mm -hmm. Um, and I was like sitting in a coffee shop in Tel Aviv and, and I read this article in the newspaper in Haaretz, which is like the New York Times of Israel. Mm -hmm. and, and I saw this montage of this man, this neo-Nazi guy with tattoos all over his face. And his name was Brian Weidner. And I read the article and I said, oh my God, I think I found my first U.S. feature. Um, um, you know, it's about a guy who basically took off his, the symbolism of hate from his body uh, and face um, uh, to become a better person. It's kind of a redemption story. Mm -hmm. So uh, we pursued, my wife and I pursued this, this story and got his life rights. We met them in, in New Mexico and him and his wife, and it was a wonderful meeting. And I, I started writing the script, but no one in the States, no one in Hollywood or in L.A., um, Cannot believe that it's a thing in, in the states, right? You know, with the, the hatred and the, those groups, those neo Nazis, and people told me that oh, it's just small little groups in in Midwest, in the Midwest of America, the backyard of America. Nobody, it's not a really really a thing, you know. Yeah. <clears throat> but I started doing my research while I was writing the script, and I saw that it's not only happening in the U.S. It's it's growing, and it's 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 bigger than what people think. Um, so nobody wanted to finance my movie, um, and I was heart heartbroken over that. And we really tried, and everybody said, said no, 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 no. 
you know, all my features were shorts before. Um, that's kind of like a muscle I like to, um, you know, rub and to, mm -hmm. to try before the, the big feature. And it helps me also to understand what kind of visual perception and visual approach and, and you know, this the whole concept of making um, a feature helps a lot when you do it as a short. And so my wife and I decided, okay, so um, while we're waiting for the feature, let's 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 think about a short with this, about the same subject. So I was miraculously, I, I read this article, this heartbreaking article in the newspaper about a neo-Nazi skinhead from um, Arizona that teach um, that teach his kid taught his kid how to shoot Mexicans in the border while they cross the border. Um, it's kind of a militia that he uh, established. And he, the kid was only 10 um, and he was brainwashed him. And he like basically, um, 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 and, then, and then one night the father came home uh, drunk um, at 2 a.m. and the, the son thought he's an intruder, African-American intruder. So he took the father's gun and shot him in the head. Mm -hmm. And the title of this article was I shot my skinhead father. I I, I killed my skinhead father. And this whole abuse that the, the boy, you know, and, and you see videos of the father, you know, being human with a kid, but also t teaching him how to hate. Yeah. That what sparked the mm -hmm. show. At the same time, my friend Shalom Maimon, who is a screenwriter and, and a filmmaker himself in Israel, called me and told me about um, uh, um, a thing in the movie. I don't want to obvious, obviously uh, disclose because it's kind of a... Um, right. Yeah. <laughs> it's a twist that I don't want uh, people to know, but it's, it's, he told me about an idea that he had uh, about this whole thing, and we kind of uh, um, um, combined those for forces, creative forces, and we wrote skin over the weekend. Yeah. Out of our retirement money, basically, um, we put all our money in the short, amazing cast, and Danielle McDonald, who is our neighbor here. Um, really? Because she's hot now, you know? She's like in every film, she's in Bird Box, she's in Dumpling, I mean, she's a, like a thing, so you're very lucky to be living near her. <laughs> I mean, when, I, when we know her, when we knew her, she just finished shooting um, um, patty cakes. Yeah. So it's, and obviously, it's like she's so talented, and she's she she felt right for the subject, and she she felt right for the feature as well. So, um, yeah, we we um, we uh, had amazing team. We went to shoot it two hours away from LA, and you know, edited it and. Once once the film was ready, we sent it out to producers and actors, and then Trump got elected. Um, I, I got my citizenship like a week before Trump got elected. I was lucky. Um, lucky, you might be going home. <laughs> yeah. And um, Charlottesville happened, you know, and this, it was an explosion of extremism in the U.S. Yeah. I mean was always there you know you, when you said when it wasn't there when I was kind of like 10 20 years ago it was but it was very quiet now they feel that they have the platform they have the, right. the, the ability to raise up rise up and, and say and, and do whatever they want to do um, so everything happened and the approach to the feature was kind of different yeah so or in the movement, who is an amazing filmmaker yeah. himself and, and, a, and a great friend now, um, read the script of Skin the Feature, saw the short, and said, I'm in. Yeah. So he was the first man, the first producer that said, I'm in. And then Trudy Styler and mm -hmm. Celine Redray from Maven Pictures from um, New York also read the script and said, oh my God, it's so timely, we gotta tell this story. And they were the only one from, I'm telling you, we went to the entire town, like like many, many producers said, it's good, but it's too scary for us to deal with. Um, 
they they didn't have the um, um, you know the, the the they didn't see the potential of this coming out in the right time. Mm -hmm. uh, so once we had the producers, we needed an actor and actors to come on board. So that's so the feature started to happen. Yeah. Once so the feature happened and. You know, the short was ready, and we sent it out to film festivals. You know, the film festival. Mm -hmm. you no, know, that's what you do with a short. You just send it out. It's like almost like a, um, you never know what's going to happen. Almost like a kite, you know, the right. take or whatever. And then while we were editing the feature, we suddenly got a, a phone call from Holy Shorts. Holy Shorts in LA that we won the, the big prize with a short. Yeah. And that allowed us to send it to the Oscars. Mm -hmm. so there was almost like a parallel um, course of, you know, of the, with a the feature and a short. Again, it's not the same story, but it is, it's the same topic. It's almost yeah. like the opposite because the short is about someone who's, you know, um, learning uh, on his own skin mm -hmm. uh, how it feels to, to be a racist. And, mm -hmm reverse race racism mm. well so, I, the feature so, uh, taking off your tattoos yeah. and becoming a better man yeah but um now you took um skin the feature to toronto is that going to open in theaters or is that online or where is it now so in toronto a24 bought it um uh, and they're going to release it uh, in the U.S. in the end of July. Yeah. And Daniel is in that too, right? Daniel McDonald plays Julie um, and Jamie Bell and Vera Farmiga and mm -hmm. Camp and amazing actors. That no, was. great, great actors. Huh? No, you, you, you've been very lucky, so it's good that... <laughs> You made your short and got things moving, but uh, no, but, I waited four and a half years for that, so yeah. I mean, it's really hard. I mean, they're, they're good, I mean, I hard topics, uh, get you know, a very long time to, to yeah. make. Um, I mean, look at the Dallas Buyers Club, yeah, it took 10 years to, to make, <laughs> yeah, so I guess, I guess that it's about all about timing in life, right? But, um now, I will say I was thinking about the ending because I read something someone gave you that idea that it's something that isn't always shown, the retaliation part of it. But I kept thinking, you know, I, I, I heard in my head, two wrongs don't make a right, you know, and I don't know how I feel about that, you know, that happened. So I don't know what, you know, you were hoping people would feel when they saw the conclusion to the film. Well, you know, there's, um, there's a saying in the Talmud, where I'm, I'm, I'm Jewish, but I'm not religious, but there's a, one saying in the Talmud that I feel very close to is, uh, our fathers ate bad fruit and their children uh, teeth uh, will be rotten, which means whatever you teach your kids going to end up biting you in the ass. Right. Um, which is the cycle of violence of education. We go back to education and we go back to the, to the, what we indoctrinate our kids. Um, and that's, that's the lesson that the father is getting. Um, and I know it's not, it's not an easy ending. I know it's, it's, it's a, a lot of people feel like they're appalled by that, but it's almost like what careful what you wish wish for. You know, yeah. you teach your kids hate, you know, like have those this hate in your face as a backlash. And that's kind of like my message. Yeah. Um, let's go educate our kids. Let's go back to the education. Because it could be uh, someone who went to ISIS, you know, yeah. and joined ISIS forces. It could be someone that is extreme right in, in Israel, you know, that is a settler um, that is going and to, to hurt an Arabs. It could be somebody from the Hezbollah, a little kid. We're talking about kids who are soldiers, you know? Mm. 
doctrinated into those um, those hatred and um, hate and, and and violence. And I think that's the problem of the world today. Mm. When we go back to what is the main problem, is it's those kids, like Brian Widener, by the way, in my film, from the age of 14, he was brainwashed to hate. Yeah. Um, so th that's that's the end of, of of the of the short because you know I could I could also uh, make a sweeter end or somebody with something with with hope, but right now in time in America I don't see this hope. No, yeah, it's it's gonna come. I know <laughs> because I think I, mostly people don't think like that. It's just that as I was saying, you know, this kind of thinking has been given you know a chance to fester in a way that it hasn't for you know <clears throat> amongst people who are different thinking would allow it and it's now been given this way of you know taking hold in a way that you know in the past people would be you know condemned for it and now there's you know a club of them <laughs> that it's like, oh, we found each other. And it's, it's you know, it happens in life in many ways. But in this case, it's unfortunate. It's being supported by, you know, who's in the office at this time. I'm not sure that, that the guy in the office right now is not going to go for another four years. I have this kind of uh, uh, debate with my father-in-law who said, oh, he's going to go down. He's going to go down. I'm, I'm not sure he's going to go down. And I'm coming from Israel that... Benjamin Netanyahu is controlling the, the, you know, he's in power for the last yeah. long, decades. So, I mean, it's, it's, you know, and after Rabin got assassinated, you would think that, okay, as a, as a nation, we learned the lesson, but no, people went, went right way. Right. Yeah. Went right. And it's, it's, I'm coming from a troubled country to a troubled country. You yeah. Know? Yeah. Um, well, I hope, you know, with art, I think it does make a difference. And so I don't know, maybe someday you'll make a comedy, but <laughs> oh, <laughs> but oh. if, you're, if your bent is to reflect things and make us think the way you made me think with this short film, then I, I, that's okay too. So, but yeah, the uh, feature is more optimistic. Right. Way. So and you counterbalanced it, and that's good. Exactly. The feature yeah. is about like open, open a dialogue, listen, yeah. accept, try to accept. Because I'm not, I'm not, I'm not asking anyone to like a monster character, but I yeah. do ask them to listen to him. Yeah. Have a have a place in your heart to 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 listen to this guy who wants to be a better person. So if the short was grim, the feature is more more hopeful. Okay, and we're gonna. You said it, it'll come out in theaters. It'll come out in theaters. It will be. Uh, it was sold to twenty two countries in in Europe that has the same problem right now. I just just came back from Berlin, and Berlin has a, a major problem of of white supremacists and neo Nazis. Yeah, yeah. Uh, well, as a Holocaust survivor, second generation, mm -hmm. Holocaust survivor grandparents, I feel. I felt horrible seeing this. Yeah. Well, I, I, I hope everything goes well for you at the Oscars. <laughs> and you have a good time. And uh, you continue making films because you obviously have something to say. I think that is very worthwhile. So, so much. Thank, thank you for your time. Thank you. And, and again, good luck. <laughs> Bye-bye.